Hi everyone, we'll be covering the basics of APA documentation in today's dissertation toolbox. And we're just, as the title says, we're just going to be going over some basics. We're not going to be getting into uh, a lot of detail because APA is a very complex system. So um, if we don't cover what you're looking for in this session, you can always make an appointment with one of our tutors or check out the sixth edition of the APA manual. Um, and you can find a link to that book on our Moodle. So what is APA style uh, citation? So APA stands for the American Psychological Association and it is the citation style most commonly used to format manuscripts in the social sciences. And it is the citation, citation style that you will be required to use when writing your dissertation. So what does APA regulate? It regulates stylistics, that is, you want to keep your writing clear and concise not too flowery, um, as specific and clear as possible. It also regulates in-text in citations. That is uh, where you include the authors in the body of your paper and the references. And that would be the list of sources that you used that goes at the end of your paper. General APA format. Um, so, like most essays you have learned to write in the past, it should be typed, doubled space with a one inch, one inch margin, and using a 12 point standard font, usually Times New Roman or occasionally Arial. And it should be printed on standard sized 8.5 by 11 inch paper. And additionally, you want to make sure that you press the space bar twice after periods um, at the end of a sentence because this makes your paper a little bit easier to read. So more on the general APA format. Every page of your essay should include a page header and that should be the title in all caps in the upper left hand corner and the page number in the upper right hand corner. Again, on our Moodle website, there is a template that we have created in Microsoft Word format, which you can download and insert your own title directly into the header to make it easier for you if you aren't sure how to figure out how to create your own header on a blank document. Your essay needs to include four major sections. That includes the title page, the abstract, on the second page, which is a brief summary of your dissertation, the main body of your uh, report or study, and your reference page. On your title page, which you can see here, uh, it needs to include the page header, which starts with the running head, and uh, then after that, in all caps, your title or a shortened title of your dissertation and the page number, of course, again. The title then in the center of the page uh, needs to have, um, needs to be on the first line, followed by your name and the institution you are affiliated with. So it needs to be three or four lines. The title, if it's long enough, can be two lines. And again, like I just said, I have a template of this on our Moodle that you can download and insert your own information into so you don't need to format your own paper. The next section would be the main body. And uh, this would include your first heading, which needs to be typed and at the center of the title page and at the top of the page. Towards the end of this presentation, I will show you an example of what those headings look like. The type needs to be in double space with all sections uh, following each other without a section break. That means you don't need to double space it twice between sections. Everything just needs to be double space. 
and identify the sources you use in the paper in parenthetical in-text citations, which we'll be going over next, and format all tables and figures. The last section of your paper includes the reference page, which are type references at the top of the page. Do not bold or italicize it. Double space your reference entries, and you want to flush left the first line of the entry and indent subsequent lines. And um, you could do this either by pressing tab or by going into a paragraph and uh, clicking on. Uh, so you'll go click on paragraph and then click on special and select. Hanging, hanging, that's it, hanging, and it will uh, indent your lines automatically for you. Let's see, next slide. More references. So you want to invert the author's name, that is, you want to put their last name first, followed by their first initial. Capitalize only the first letter of the first word of the title and subtitle, the first word after a colon or a dash in the title, and proper nouns. Do not capitalize the first letter of the second word in a hyphenated compound word. I have an example right here. So we have the is capitalized. Perfectly formatted paper is not capitalized. Only capitalize the first letter, colon, how, with a capital H, the Hawk Tutoring Center, and that is a formal name, so I have that capitalized saved my essay, all in lowercase. Additionally, you'll want to capitalize all major words in journal titles. So that is, you will not have the following words after the first word in lowercase. You'll italicize titles of longer words, such as books and journals. And you will not italicize, underline, or put quotes around the titles of shorter works, like journal articles or essays in edited collections. And I have an example down here um, below. The author's last name, comma, first initial, the year of publication, the title of the article, student-centered instruction involving students in their own education. Again, notice only the first letter is capitalized um, in the title and after the colon, Music Educators Journal. It's the name of a journal, so we'll put it in italics. And then following that, we have the uh, issue number, uh, the journal uh, publication number, the issue number, and the page numbers that the article was found on. Okay. So now we're going to go in how to make the reference list. That's, again, the last section of your paper. APA is a complex system of citation. When compiling the reference list, the strategy below might be useful. First, identify the source. Is it a book, a journal, a web page? And then find a sample citation for this type of source. I'll usually go in the reference section of the book or the journal article and find the type of source that I'm looking for and then mirror that sample. So do exactly as what they do. Check to see whether the, which words are capitalized, which words are in lowercase, um, where the periods are, where the parentheses are, and then insert my own information um, into that sample. And make sure all the entries are listed in alphabetical order and that subsequent lines are indented. That would be uh, where you press tab after the first line. Moving on from the reference list to in-text citations. In-text citations is the information you put in the body of your paper, and they help readers locate the cited source in the reference section of the paper. So whenever you use the information from a source in the body of your paper, you need to uh, provide in parentheses the author's name and the date of publication, and for quotations and close paraphrases, provide the author's name, date of publication, and the page number as well. 
and I have a small snippet of an example down here of a quote. Uh, let's start at the sentence, these scientists suggest about language acquisition processing, comma, there are neurological changes in the brain that leave a learner less able to acquire a language, although the nature of these supposed changes is not well understood. Close quotation marks, parentheses, uh, David W. Carroll, page 329. And actually, I see an error in this citation because I took it directly from a student's paper. Uh, you, uh, the writer here did not need to include the whole name of the person. They just needed to include Carol, comma, and then the year of publication. For example, if it was published in 2008, they would put 2008, then page 329. So again, this is not a perfect example as it was taken from a student's paper. Okay, in-text citation, quotations. So when quoting, as in the last example, you want to introduce the quotation with a signal phrase, include the author's name, year of publication, and page number, and keep the citation brief. Do not repeat the information. And I have two ways that you can cite uh, quotations. The first one, I introduce it with the author's name. Gross Jean, year of publication, stated that a traumatic response frequently entails a, quote, delayed, uncontrolled, repetitive appearance of hallucination and other intrusive phenomena, close parentheses, and then the page number and the period. Also, if you don't want to include the author's, or introduce the quote with the author's first, with the author's last name, you can begin uh, by just stating what is the information you want to include. A traumatic response frequently entails a delayed, uncontrolled, repetitive appearance of hallucinations and other intrusive phenomena, close quotation mark, and then in parentheses include the author's last name, year of publication, and page number. Okay, so in in-text citations, for summary and paraphrase, you'll want to provide the author's last name and the year of publication in parentheses after the summary or paraphrase. So you do not need to include the page number of the information in a summary or paraphrase. You could see that in the example down here. At the end of the summary, I've included the author's last name, Ullman, comma, and the year of publication, close parentheses, period. Additionally, for in-text citation, you can include the author's name in the signal phrase followed by the year of publication in parentheses. So here, this student has introduced their summary by introducing it with the authors. Um, Pereni and Ambutalebi, year of publication, maintained that and then continued with whatever it is that they want to say about that publication. All right, in-text citation, signal words. So. Uh, it's a good idea to introduce quotations with signal phrases to help guide your reader uh, in, in making your paper more clear and specific. So I have some examples of signal phrases that might be useful. For example, you can say, according to Goldenrod, and then the year of publication, open quotations, insert the quote, and then include the page number in the end. Goldenrod argued, blah, blah, blah. And um, I also have some other signal words listed, for example, acknowledged, concluded, maintained, responded, contended, argued, reported. And make sure you're careful with your verb tense when you use your verbs here. You want to make sure that they are in the past tense when discussing events in the past or in the present tense as if it's something that is still happening or true today. So in in-text citations, that is for quote, summary, or paraphrases, when you are using two or more works, you need to order them in the same way they appear in the reference list, with the author's name, the year of publication, and separated by a semicolon. You can see the example I've included here. If you look at the end of the sentence, I have the authors in alphabetical order. So 
Abu Talebi, comma, publication in 2005, and then a semicolon to separate the, uh, this publication from the next publication, which would be Ullman, comma, 2001. Now, if you have a work, work, if you are including works with three or more authors, or three to five, I'm sorry, three to five authors, you'll want to identify all the authors in the signal phrases or in parentheses. For example, I have three authors listed here. Anderson, Michaels, and Scarborough, publication 2009. You'll only need to list all three or five or four in the, f the first time you mention them, though. In subsequent citations, only use the author's last name followed by et al in the signal phrase or in parentheses. So anytime I reference this work by Anderson, Michaels, and Scarborough in subsequent um, paragraphs, I only need to include Anderson's name with et al followed by the year of publication. Now, if you are including works with six or more authors, you do not need to identify all of the author's names the first time you reference them. You can simply put the first author, the, the name of the first author, say if it's Scarborough, and then et al and the year publication in parentheses. Okay. For unknown authors, if you are citing a work or something that you and you don't know who wrote the work, you'll want to use the source's full title in the signal phrase. Cite the first word of the title followed by the year publication in parentheses. For example, for example, According to BBC Brain Story, now that would be the title of the publication and then the year it was published, or BBC 2005. Okay, and when you are citing these uh, in the text, if you include the, if you need to include the name of the article or chapter or book in the text, since you don't know the author's name, you want to include articles and chapters in quotation marks and books and reports in italics. If you are citing an organization in the text of your paragraph, make sure you mention the organization the first time you cite the source in the signal phrase or the parenthetical citation. I have an example sentence below. The data collected by the Food and Drug Administration, and then the year that that data was published, 2015, confirmed that blah, blah, blah. Now, if the organization, like the Food and Drug Administration, has a well-known abbreviation, you can include that abbreviation in brackets the first time you cite the source, and then simply write the abbreviation in later citations. For example, the first time, you want to say the whole name of the organization, Food and Drug Administration, and then put FDA in parentheses afterwards. Following that, you can just say FDA. You don't need to write the whole name of the, uh, you don't need to write out the entire name of the organization. Okay. All right, if you are citing something and there are multiple authors with the same last name, be sure to include the first initial of their First, the, their, their first initial followed by their last name. For example, if there are two Scarboroughs, two different Scarboroughs <laughs> that have published a paper, a C Scarborough and an L Scarborough, make sure you include their first initial so we know which Scarborough you're referring to. Also, well, while citing two or more works by the same author and published in the same year, use lowercase letters after the year of publication to order the references. So say you have two references by Scarborough 2004. Scarborough wrote two different articles. You'll want to have the first article, um, the one published, uh, the one published first, uh, followed by the letter A, the one published later, followed by the letter B.
If you are citing something in the body of your paper that was personal communication, that is an interview, a letter, an email, you'll want to include the communicator's name as well as note the fact that it was personal communication and the date of the communication. The example here is I have the name. L. Lyon also claimed that many of her shelter dogs had difficulty adapting to their forever homes. And the writer of that was uh, received that information through personal communication on November 3rd, 2004. And if you don't want to cite the name of the person you communicated with directly, you can include them at the end of the the citation or the end of the information, the end of the summary or paraphrase, and put the name in parentheses, as I have indicated below. Also, you do not need to include personal communication in the reference list. Citing electronic sources in the body of your paper. When citing an electronic document, <laughs> whenever possible, cite it in the author date style. And if an electronic source lacks page numbers, you'll want to locate and identify the paragraph number or the paragraph heading. For example, I have according to Gardner, 2006, and then the dot 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 is whatever it is I want to say about that publication. And then in parentheses, I have the title of the work, Statistics 101, section, comma, paragraph 6, because there was no page number because I found it you know, on a blog or something online, so I have cited the paragraph. Okay. Let's move on to headings. There are five different levels of headings used in APA paper. These headings are, again, headings you would put in the body of your paper. The first heading is centered, bold-faced, and upper and lowercase headings. The second level of heading is left-aligned, bold-faced, upper and lowercase headings. When I say upper and lowercase headings, that means you'll want every letter of the first word to be in uppercase, followed by lowercase for the rest of the letters in that word. The third level is indented, bold-faced, lowercase heading with a period. The fourth level is indented, bold-faced, italicized, lowercase with a period. And the fifth level, which you'll probably never use, I I don't think I've ever seen it in a paper before, is indented, italicized, lowercase with a period, not bolded. Moving on from headings to tables. You'll want to label your tables in Arabic numeral and provide a title. The label and title appear on separate lines above the table, flush left and single spaced. So for example, your first table will be titled Table 1. And then you'll indent the next line, and it will be single space, not double, and your title, Internet Users in Asia. And that title will be italicized. Below that, you'll have your table, and it will also be flush left um, parallel with the title of your table. Um, and you will not want your table to be in color, as the example in the PowerPoint is. You'll want it to be black and white. And you just say it. Okay, and Rich is gonna make um, add additional information really quick on tables. Hello everybody. Just a quick reminder, we have a video that shows you guys how to get the SPSS output, all the tables and everything, into APA formatted style. So please check that video out. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Now let's move on from tables to figures. You'll also want to label figures with an Arabic numeral and provide a title. The label and the title appear on the same line below the figure and you'll want to flush it left. You'll, you also might provide an additional title centered above the figure. Cite the source below and table below the table and the title. So, for example, 
your first figure, figure one, make sure to put that in italics with a period, and then the title, Internet Users in Asia, adapted from the Asian Union Statistical Comparison by Eric Gardner, Statistical Books, 2006, and then I also put the website I retrieved it from. Um, you don't need to include all of this information, but if you have, say, the website you retrieved it from, then I would definitely include it. Um, okay, so that is actually the last slide in the basics of APA style documentation. I'd like to also say that on our website, we have an APA citation chart that lists every kind of source that exists and how to cite it, uh, not only in your reference list, but in your in-text citations as well. And it's very, very detailed. It also gives you tips on how to um, how to incorporate them into the body of your paragraph using transitional phrases. And the title is APA Citation Chart. So you, if you have a more specific question on how to cite something, I recommend going to that list and searching there for it. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful. We thank you.